Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Trade Out Loud Futures Trading Room. My name is Anka Metcalf, and today is Thursday. It is November 19th, 2020. It is 9.20 a.m. Eastern Time. Before we begin, can I please have a quick sound check? And uh, please let me know if you can hear my voice. Thank you, everyone. Good morning, and welcome to a brand new trading session. Uh, let's start with the economic releases. Today uh, is Thursday. We had unemployment claims and Philly Fed Manufacturing Index both coming in at 8.30 a.m. Eastern. And we're seeing the market that is holding the current range for the last uh, half an hour or so. At 10 o'clock, we have the CB Lending Index and we also have existing home sales. And uh, this is coinciding with the first major reversal time in the market. Also at 10.30, we have natural gas storage. All right, so let's begin. Let's take a look at the chart and let's see what we have in store for the trading session today. Now, yesterday into the close, we had some selling going on and the market has been into this uh, sideways pattern a uh, wide sideways pattern since last Monday when we had the first Pfizer vaccine pop into the market in the overnight trading session. In fact, that's initiated at 6 a.m. And since then, we are maintaining the high in the Dow at 30,000 and we are maintaining the 28,800 low big support, major support. We're also trying to elevate the support level into the Dow. But before we dive into charts, let's take a look and see if the market are synchronized or if they are divergent. First off, uh, the Dow is down 67 points as of right now. We have seven points uh, down into the m and S&P, 25 points down in NASDAQ. And uh, Russell barely down. So Russell had a little bit more strength in yesterday's trading session, and it is down close to two points. So in terms of synchronicity and divergency, we're seeing a blend of, let's say, balance in all the indices. Uh, thus, the Dow is down 0 0.22, S&P 0.21, NASDAQ 020. So there's a nice blend. Uh, also, gold has retested in the early hours the 1850 line in the sand that has been a major support level uh, since September and is trading into that area, not able to sustain the highs. And we're seeing the curves that are created into the moving averages. We're having the 200 simple moving average that is curbing for the first time in a very long time to the downside. And we're having the fanning out of the moving averages, which suggests that there is the possibility of the break below uh, 1850. And we may get more selling pressure into uh, gold. Uh, as far as uh, crude oil is concerned, uh, we are looking at the four hour chart here. And the reason why I have this uh, time frame is so you can see that we have this massive resistance into the $42 and $42.50. There's a huge ban. And in fact, it goes as far as $43. So it's a really wide band of over a dollar of resistance into oil. Now we initiated a trade in oil yesterday. Uh, we wanted to, in, uh, to uh, uh, see it to the upside, a long directional bias. And we closed the trade at break even. We had a first target, we had an entry at 30, it hit 40, so we were up 10 cents and then it didn't have velocity to continue higher. So uh, this is a good rule of thumb but that your trade is not going anywhere from that spot. And you can see that you have a new band of resistant development. It is, it is really advisable to see that once you have one tap, two tap, three taps, when you see that it's still having issues, just cut it at break even. There's always going to be a next reshuffle 
and you're going to have another setup line up shortly. So don't be stubborn when it comes to resistance and support areas, uh, just because you know that you have a trade. And shortly after we exited the trade, you can see that the price came back to the 20 SMA. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, I wanna show you the uh, pattern that we are uh, trading into the Dow. So can you please give me a very quick, um, check and see if you guys can see this one big chart right here and if you can see my cursor as well all right thank you so much all right so uh when we started i mentioned the fact that the dow is trading at thirty thousand, and we do have the support into the 28 200 now what this uh does to the market uh basically what the high and the swing will create it is a, the new trading parameter. This is not bearish by any way, shape or form. And you can see here that we had a little rally. We came back to retest the prior low. Immediately the price uh, and the buyers stepped back in. Buyers took the price immediately back into the 30,000 uh, level right here. And by the way, this is another vaccine pop that took the price exactly to the 30,000. So literally exactly to that high. So uh, from this point on, on Monday, this happened on Monday, we uh, had a very range bound Monday. So you guys remember that Monday was very literally range bound. Uh, then we have a we had a, a range bound, but a pop off of the low off minor support spot. And remember, we were in the trading room and we uh, looked at that five minute rotation that came in at 10 o'clock. That 10 o'clock rotation pushed the price higher and then it remained sideways. Uh, the smaller time frames were very conflicting. And in fact, even the uh, higher time frames were conflicting when uh, that rotation happened because it encountered a lot of resistance spots that were um, uh, seen as obstacles into price advancement to higher uh, to higher price targets. And then as soon as we have this we have this pivot low in the overnight trading session, the price regained the 20 SMA. It rotated off the 20 SMA and it created this high right here. Yesterday in uh, the Dow, you could see right here that uh, we had a pullback. We had some price gyrations. Like I said, we did manage to get 20 points out of uh, uh, YM to the long side, but shortly after the afternoon trading session and the pressure came uh, right after the doldrum period ended, uh, the price retested this minor support spot that is deriving from this prior pivot high, this resistance. So you can see here. Now the price is getting, now remember, this is still ongoing and this is still into an ongoing uh, trend because this low has not violated the prior low. So as, as long as this low is holding, we are still going to look to the bullish side. The only issue here is that we have a lot of pressure from the MAs and from prior uh, price support areas and also some confluence areas that we have on the chart that are going to be uh, very difficult to break out from. Now, remember, the price needs a, cat needs a catalyst in order to start pushing higher or lower. Uh, so for today, we do have support into the uh, 29 180 area uh we do possibly we can't we're looking at a four hour rotation however this four hour rotation is not going to be as easy uh to penetrate through these resistance areas remember we still have have this prior pivot high that is creating resistance at this point and we have the ma's and the confluence spots now i want to show you very quickly what we're up against on the one hour so we have the 200 sma the 20 sma uh we do have uh this possible well, possible if we trade above this area over 400, we can start being a little bit more moderately bullish. So I'm going to switch here and I'm, I'm going to say MOD bullish. And um, this is where the chop is going to start as well because we're having chop all the way into the 480. So it's going to be a very painful, painful, painful day today. All right, so uh, this is basically the cluster that I've been telling you guys about. This is a real heavy duty resistance spots. Now for the downside, 
Of course, we are going to look these hourly rotations. Now the market just opened, a little bit of selling pressure. Now remember, this is the usual morning calibration. We have to we have to wait and see if we have the proof to go short or long or whatever the scenario is. But the price is being rejected into the resistance spot. It's more bearish at this point than bullish because we have a high. So from the structure, we have a triple top. We have a lower high that is uh, set into resistance from this prior pivot low and this prior pivot high. And then we have the third one right here that is being generated right now. So before the open, the price was still trying to curl and try to push over this uh, over this 370 spot. Now we're going to have to wait and see. This is the new, this is actually the new box, the trading box for today. It's going to be between 180 and that's a really wide range and 476. Now this is a very, 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 I should put like extremely, uh, extremely choppy environment to trade. Anything that trades below this 180 can possibly see be seen as a short into weakness and into pullbacks that could take the price into the 28, uh, 28,850 or so. And furthermore, bearish from that spot if we don't get a rotation or a short squeeze. Uh, let me... Um, show you the mini SMP. So the charts are extremely messy. They are, you know, it's one of those days where you want to say, hey, if there's proof, I want to go long. If there's, uh, you know, enough proof to go short, I want to go. But right now, there is absolutely zero chances that I would take a trade right now off the open or even into 10 o'clock. Uh, we're going to have to wait and see. But uh, it's a, it, it's going to be a minute by minute decision uh, throughout the trading session today. Uh, even the scalping, when you're scalping, you either have a nice uh, a range or you have an uptrend or you have a downtrend. Now you have a lot of chop. You don't have, uh, you have the ter determined trend, but you're in a sideways. Um, and in fact, this is a stage three in the market, which is the uh, decision stage, the, the, uh, the, I would say the indecision stage, because the indecision stage is going to be bullish above and bearish below. So there's going to be a decision that is going to be made here. Plus, I read some, um, and actually, I, I read, uh, you know, some analyst posts, and uh, they were showing some graphs into selling into this resistance, how apparently institutions were selling into resistance. I don't see the selling. Uh, I did not see the selling and I don't see it represented on the technical chart. So I am going to go by my personal uh, opinions and beliefs uh, because I am not seeing any kind of surge in volume in either direction. So I don't think that there has been, uh, you know, selling into the top. Uh, but we're going to have to wait and see for the proof. This is, you know, they're, they're entitled to their own opinion. We're entitled as technical traders to our own personal opinion. We're seeing some more selling pressure right now. All right. So, of course, the narrative is going to influence the price. Now, this is going to be the spot for the bearish below, and this is going to be a break below the range. And this bearish scenario, anything under this 35 13 to 3,500 area, 3,500 is going to be seen more bearish than the 3,513, uh, has room to progress lower into the 60s, into the 3,460s to 3,470s. Not a lot of room, and then we become bullish again. This is a maximum, the 3,460, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> 65 level is seen as an area of confluence, not only that we have this 200 SMA, but we have it from other time frames that suggest that, that we have like mass, massive, massive, massive confluence, uh, confluence area right there. Now, let me share with you a fact that is very interesting right here. For those of you that say, hey, wow, I'm going to short it right now, right here. I wouldn't do that. Not so fast. Because take a look what's going on onto the daily chart. Ta-da! Here we have the, uh, the 10 EMA that is creating lots of support. And you have this prior pivot high. I mean, are we gonna ignore this? This is coming exactly into uh, 41. The price is right now into the 47 and the price had a low into 42. This 
area can be tested multiple times and we can actually see a slide to the downside into the 18 and still a pop higher. This is setting the stage for a pullback and rotation on a daily chart. So I would actually love to see a further pullback into the m and S&P because I would like to have my one, two, three pattern. Remember one, two, three, cha, 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 rotation green and up. So this is what I'm looking for. So this may not be the day for uh, the bullish environment. Yesterday, we were setting up for a, a bullish sandwich uh, before we actually start selling into the end of the trading session. So today is gonna be like, let's take a look at the market, you know, uh, day by day and hour by hour, okay? And also minute by minute. All right, so we're gonna go, okay. So I wanna go back here to the uh, M&E S&P and show you something incredible. Take a look at where the price came into to retest these prior lows right here. And by the way, this is minor support. In case you have not noticed this minor support where this minor support is coming from, I'm gonna show it to you once again right now to see the impact of this minor support spot, okay? So we're having this support area right here Okay, this support area right here that is coming from, wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. You see this prior pivot high right here? Bingo, this is why it's bouncing off of this spot. So this is a heavy duty support spot right here. It's a minor support spot. It's not a confluence spot, but it's a minor support spot. So as long as this area is gonna hold and as long as we're gonna get a pop and we're patient to wait for a pop above this spot right here, we can enter again into an uptrend. There's nothing that has changed within this uh, trend from the swing low to the swing high. All right, let's take a look at NASDAQ. And uh, uh, we have two more indices, like I said, not very excited about trading. And by the way, we're getting a two minute and we're setting up for a five minute rotation very early on, but we need to see some more proof of action here. Okay, NASDAQ a little bit stronger. Remember NASDAQ was a bit beat up last week and into Monday, Tuesday, even yesterday was very choppy. And then it had incredible strength that came out of the blue. And in fact, it didn't come out of the blue. It came from relative strength that came into, you know, some stocks like, um, like Tesla, for instance, like Tesla, I looked at it this morning was pushing towards $500. But anyway, it's uh, pushing uh, pushing towards getting above this prior high right here. Again, you can see a lot of pressure into price at this point. Let me just shrink it up a little bit so you can see what's going on in the market. So uh, we do have a double bottom formation into this spot. The trend is still intact for the upside. Any push over the 810 to 820 area will be seen as bullish environment. We're having an inside bar right here on the four hour. And in fact, you can see here the four hour has been one, two, three, four. Well, basically since the open, the whole entire overnight trading session has been raging. So it has not taken any decision. So uh, Asian traders and uh, New York trading sessions, session trade, uh, and uh, I'm sorry, London session traders have not taken into decision. Now, this is going to be the first break of resistance. This is not just resistance spot. And this is where we could see a possible, you know, small short squeeze possibly into the 950 and then back into the 12,000. If we want to see the market accelerate higher, uh, I would say from swing standpoint, we want to see it over 12,000. Um, and 55 area. And then if it breaks over uh, 11, uh, then we can see the market and definitely NASDAQ propel higher. Let's take a look. I left the, be the best for last. RTY in the trading session uh, is looking a little bit more bullish. And in fact, it's really, really bullish right here. I like this outside of chop spot. Uh, this, uh, if it trades over 1780, this can be seen as a possible swing to the upside all the way into the 1800. So it has a, it has room uh, from 80 to 1800. That's about 20 points. The risk to reward ratio is not going to be that fantastic uh, since the support level is into the 1750. Uh, so for today's trading session, we're already trying to do a four hour rotation. However, this four hour rotation is coming into resistance right here into up to the 70s and into the 70 to 73. We have declining 10 EMA that is putting pressure on price. If we trade above this spot, then we have a little squeeze probably into the 75 or so. Like I said, 80 is going to do the trick when it comes to Russell. So we really need to see it. And we're really far away from that area and from that spot. 
All right, so I'm gonna zoom in right now into our smaller time frames, and we're gonna literally start watching for some trades. I don't know what you know what today is gonna bring. Like I said, it's a total chop fest. I'm not gonna rush in anything because there's nothing to rush into. Um, but uh, definitely. Uh, something that you know uh, we need we definitely need to start watching some some formations hopefully we're going to get something and somewhere today remember you don't have to trade every single day to make money into the market to create an income and, or to grow your nest egg Russell is a little bit more bullish. Um, it's entering that purple spot right there into the 1769-ish zone. The support is um, well, current support right now 1757. So we have a 10 point, uh, 10 point, uh, 10 point risk level here. The volatility continues. Like I said, expect this volatility to continue. Make proper adjustments to your trading account. Uh, it's also advisable in this kind of market environment to risk half of your uh, risk uh, or a quarter, depending on your risk. Remember, always position size for your trade. Uh, this is the wisest thing to do. Scale out into some targets and leave the last lot or lots for further development higher. Uh, like I said, the five minute chart um, into Russell is the only one that looks a little better than everything else because we do have this possible squeeze over here but we want to make sure that we see the other indices uh, trading into the same formation. NVIDIA still holding that daily range, by the way. Uh, we're seeing uh, Square that is very bullish on the trading session today and some NASDAQ stocks that are not giving up just yet. I know it's still very early, but we're almost into the first 15 minutes. Uh, Netflix is still basing, and uh, like I said, PayPal basing, um, Twitter, Facebook, you know, some of the stocks that I'm watching. And uh, as far as the Dell stocks, uh, we have Boeing that is uh, picking up some steam here off of the upper 200 level and trying to push a little bit higher. Uh, we don't have the strength as much into JP Morgan like we did because we had a gap down, but we're still, uh, JP Morgan is trading into an island. If it trades below 110, it's going to be an island reversal and the price is going to go lower. And therefore, we can see some more weakness into the and the SMP. Uh, AXP as well, they're all trading into islands uh, right here. So th there's a gap up and they're levitating into those spots. Uh, City is definitely way, way, way stronger uh, than uh, any financial that I'm looking at. Uh, Bank of America is getting a little bit of weakness here. All right, so we have a first tail in Russell on the five minute. That punch over that uh, 68 spot and uh, price coming back in. Look at these charts, guys. There's nothing tradable about these charts. Wow. If I don't see a high out trade, I'm not going to trade today at this shop. It's better to stay away until the market proves its true directional bias. Okay, you guys see right now the six charts, right? Okay. 
Thank you. Now stock a little perkier here. You want to see uh, who the leader is. And by the way, NASDAQ is still into the 10 EMA. So there's literally no drama right now. We want to see if our, if we are going to hold that 10 EMA. And I think that the most important thing is going to um, be determined at the end of the trading session today. Today is going because we are trading into a chop today. Um, the decision is going to be uh, at the end of the trading session today. If we close the dailies below the 10 EMA, we're going to have a bearish day tomorrow. If we stabilize and try to rotate and pop up a little bit off of that spot uh, from the daily charts, then we may pop a little bit higher uh, weekly inside week. So we are not having the velocity to the upside or to the downside. This is a, the major cause of this uh, turbulence into the market. Uh, the, if the daily starts setting up, then the weekly will pick up. So, it, you know, it's up to the daily right now to see what we're doing. And obviously we need the end of the day uh, closing uh, in order to determine uh, what's going to happen uh, into, um, into tomorrow's trading session. So today we're having right now the prices uh, within inside uh, yesterday's uh, lows into NASDAQ and we're trying to pop up a little bit. The one minute is trying to do a little sandwich uh, in NASDAQ uh, over 895, 895 by 878, 95 by 78 and can possibly see it already went there and then look, it's coming back. So I'm, I'm watching right, really small time frames and um, the one minute I'm watching right now, for instance, and I'm not seeing any sustained momentum, not a lot of volume either. So not a lot of commitment, by the way, the first 15 minutes is uh, in and we're having the 15 minute high low. We triggered a 15 minute rotation in NASDAQ and so far nothing has happened i'm not going to go by that first 15 minute rotation that would be way too easy <laughs> that would be way too easy no 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 okay 15 minute rotation has is already in progress in the mini &E smp and uh also <clears throat> into ym and into rty so we're getting a little squeeze right here so we had a little bit of pop here in NASDAQ. <clears throat> I mean, look at these charts, guys. This is, this is like, there's no pattern. And remember, no pattern, no trade. We want to make sure that we are not liquidity providers for the market. But like I said, I'm not seeing the market bearish until it, it's proven bearish. So we really need to, we really need a lot of confirmation from the market today to prove that bearishness. We want to see if this move to the upside is sustained. So ultimately, we want to see pressure to the upside into 10 o'clock, 10 o'clock shallow pullback and resetting, reshuffling to 1030.
All right. So obviously the uh, indices are all into resistance spot right now, whether they're going to break it or reject that spot. I would rather see a break of the spot and a pullback. We also had an inside five minute rotation here, but look at, we had the same thing that happened on Tuesday. We had a lot of resistance here. And in fact, you know, the price is working on breaking out of this resistance. Let's see if it's gonna manage to break that resistance. We're seeing a bit of reaction in NASDAQ. Let the price go. We wanna make sure that we are going to be uh, in a confirmed trade. So right now, like I said, you, you have the notation here. This is a short squeeze with low odds, okay? With low, low odds right here. So we're, we wanna make sure that if this squeeze is sustained, <clears throat> this is, uh, outside of the chop. Okay, so we want what we want to see here is a break to the purple line. I'm mostly looking at Russell right here. So we want to see a break of this uh, a break of this pattern. So the first break happened. Let's see the price if it um, gets back into these uh, 80s or close to 80s, uh, upper 70s or 80s, and then if it pinches over that spot, any pullback is uh, likely a buy into Russell. The rest of the indices choppy. Uh, take a look here. Uh, finally, why I made it into a possible long scenario over the 373 to 380 area that we talk, talked about. Uh, but look at the risk level. It's 181. So this is not something that I'm going to be trading here. <clears throat> <clears throat> All right, we're getting a little bit of more velocity to the upside. Like I said, I'm still defending <clears throat> the cause for the upside in today's trading session. So just let's have a let's have some patience. Hey, Francis, all of them, you're correct. All of the indices have very wide stops. So that's why we need to wait for the better opportunity that may come in in about 30 minutes. Money come to those who wait. All right, so finally NASDAQ is, you can see it right here. This is a short squeeze. So this possibly is the entry spot, but again, the support level, you, you cannot take the New York trading session low because your support spot is all the way into the 780. <clears throat> and in this volatility, you can be chopped. So you could have a breakdown and a breakout.
Okay, we're getting some more velocity to the upside in NASDAQ, which is good. I'm also monitoring the stocks. I'm seeing a bit of a lag right now in um, uh, the Dow stocks. I'm seeing Google picking up a little bit here. So that's why uh, we're having NASDAQ um, pop a little bit more here. Okay, so we're into the first level of resistance here into NASDAQ. We're into resistance in S&P. This is the moment of truth because if we want to maintain the bullish uh, uh, bullish bias for the trading session now uh, for the morning, especially for the next hour, we want to see power push into 10 o'clock or even for a little bit further. And at 10 o'clock right now, we want to see some pullback setting in. But we want the price to expand above resistance. So this is very important right now not stop at resistance but blast through resistance so then when the pullback occurs this resistance becomes support See, not liking this, uh, uh, and we are literally seconds, 30 seconds away from 10 a.m. reversal time. You're going to see it in action right now. Most likely you're seeing that the, uh, uh, so whomever bought it, these, uh, these institutions that bought it from, right from the bottom right here, but I'm not seeing, so I think these were machines because I'm not seeing any volume that will suggest, would suggest a lot of institutions. And by the way, the volume is very low. This may promote this uh, low volume in the market. It may promote higher prices. Tesla today had a high 499.5. Right at the open. OK, 
Okay, let's say we're gonna get a sandwich here or I'm expecting a pullback because it's 10 o'clock, we should start pulling back for at least 15 minutes to 20 minutes here. Here's the pullback. Now we need to see, uh, listen, this is a pullback. Uh, the reason why I said that we need to see the S&P over that resistance spot, just like you see uh, NASDAQ that broke above the purple line. We wanted to see YM break above that purple line a little bit more, not you know just, uh, just the tad into that area. Okay, so here's what's gonna happen right now. If this pullback is going to be just a pullback and not a retest of the New York trading session low, uh, this is going to be viable. So it is very important that whatever it does, whether it's going to have a one, two, three pullback rotation, 25 to 50 percent retracement, we're going to look for a rotation for higher because this is most likely going to be a, a price mo most likely going to create a hook and it's going to push further higher. Uh, we're noticing a little bit of relative strength here in NASDAQ, but remember, even the strongest indices or stocks that you're watching uh, aren't ultimately going to pull back. They're just going to pull back um, uh, later rather than sooner. YM is not yet out of the woods, especially on the one hour chart. Smaller time frame are trying to create that hook. They What the Dow did, it closed the gap. The uh, m and &E SNP closed the gap as well, has a nice pin on the one hour. So this looks very good for higher on the one hour. Take a look at this pin. Okay, so anything, like I said, it's not gonna be high quality. It's not going to be high quality. And in fact, the S&P is looking a little bit better than other, um, other indices right now. So the parameters for S&P would be like 65 by 65 by 55 right now. If you want to, yeah, 65 by 55, that would be 10 points. The Dow doesn't look at as great as the m and &E SMP because see, the Dow needs to get over that 400 spot and then it's going to enter. Take a look. Moderately bullish, moderately bullish. So this is, this, like I said, this is possible long. So you can see that we, how many times have you guys seen possible long? Never. You see high velocity zones, conviction, bullish above, or let's say moderate bullish above, you're not gonna see possible long, like I don't know. When you see possible long, it's like, there's a 50-50 chance. We don't trade with 
Okay, this is the moment of truth right now. All right, so let's... Uh, It's still a little early. We want to see these setups uh, in about 10 minutes from now, not now. Some topping tails and Russell. Just want to take a closer look at NASDAQ here. Yeah, NASDAQ is into minor resistance. That pop that it had, it's into minor resistance. Uh, that yellow dotted line represents the lows from uh, yesterday overnight trading session is getting a reaction to the downside right now. Okay, we want to lag a little bit right now. So we want to stall, stall, stall. Um, NASDAQ not pulling back much. Yeah, Paul, I think, yeah, uh, GC may be a breakdown. GC is actually a trade off higher time frames. Okay. So here's the, uh, here are gonna be the parameters. The only problem that I see here is that we still have, you see this cluster right here? This is still, and we also have confluence with the 200 SMA into the 1820, okay? So we don't have a lot of room here compared to the risk. So if we wanna take it under 1850, we wanna place a stop into the 1900 and then the target would be into the 20. So it'll be less than one R. Okay, so it's 10, 10. They're trying to go up a little bit here. Let's see what we've got. NASDAQ. Oh. NASDAQ can potentially squeeze for a target. So pay attention here, guys. Okay, the tar ultimate target will be 35. Ooh, that's painful. Not worth it. Okay. Um, let's go back to the mini S&P. Even ESMP is setting up what I'm seeing here like the best. It's doing a five minute rotation right now. So it's trading. See, they're all doing a five minute rotation. Let me take. Five minute rotation. Oh, wow, so much resistance there into the 75, 76, 77 and 78 in Russell. See, that's why I was saying like if it would have been really helpful if this pop would have been over 400 and then the pullback, it, even into this area, you would have much more reward for the risk applied for the trades. <sighs> ugly, very, very ugly.
There's still stabilizing. Like I said, it needs to reshuffle closer to 1030. Okay, we're sliding here. Okay, still early, it's only 10.15. We're getting closer and closer to prime time trigger time. I think they're setting up some nice clusters, especially Russell and NASDAQ right now. And even the S&P, but what, what S&P is doing is digging in to get a little bit of wider stop. That's what it's doing. Yeah, Tesla, uh, I was just looking at it. 
monster. Somehow I feel like, you know, when, I, because I'm not doing options, you know? So when you're doing common, you feel like, man, I really got to trail this because it's still, you know, it's just, I mean, we had a trade in Tesla. I'm really happy with the outcome. Uh, and uh, like we trail like what? $40 ago, like $40 ago. But I, again, I'm saying that it's, it's a little bit on the heavier side. Um, yeah, the, next week, uh, actually the room is going to be open Monday and Tuesday. And uh, the trading room is going to be closed on um, um, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Usually we like to close the whole entire week, but Monday, Tuesday, uh, we're still going to. Um, uh, we're, we're going to have the room open. Uh, a lighter volume doesn't necessarily mean that uh you know it's not tradable lighter volume promotes trend trading so monday tuesday we may have pretty good days we'll see and then any updates on our swings uh and by the way wednesday is only half day guys so a half day so uh the market will close at one o'clock on wednesday and then thursday thanksgiving the market is closed and uh, then on Friday, nobody's trading. You're going to see, like, it's totally going to be like not a lot of activity in the market. Uh, but again, it promotes, you know, trend trading. But way lighter volume than Monday and Tuesday. I would say maybe quarter of the volume that we're going to see Monday and Tuesday. Uh, yeah, Arth, we have holiday next week. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, the room is going to be open. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the trading room is going to be closed. The market is going to be closed on Wednesday. And the market is also going to close very early. Uh, it's only going to trade half a session on uh, Wednesday uh, because uh, in observance of Thanksgivings. All right, so let's check out here. I'm seeing a nice doji formation here. So all eyes on this doji. It's the only index that is providing us a possible entry. But I want to monitor the rest of the indices because we may get an early trigger here, but these indices may be chopped. This is the only index that is setting up bullish. NASDAQ, guys, NASDAQ, NASDAQ right here. Hold on. Uh, let me give you the parameters. 9.12, NASDAQ long. By 8.85. Target is gonna be 9.20, but it does have this first target. 920. It's going to have another target into uh, 915 and has a pressure point into 915, but we're going to consider 920 resistance. And we're going to do 925 for the next target. If we trade over 925, we have room to 930 and 935, 930 and 935. Okay. Uh, Randy, uh, your long SMP at 65. Okay. Um, uh, 
I don't have a setup yet. I, I don't know what to tell you about the stop. I mean, the stop is still into this minor support spot. You want to wait for a clear rotation here. We're getting closer and closer to 1030. So we may be setting up. So right now, all I have to do is respect that wider stop. And just wait for it. Uh, if it trades over 59, then it's going to look better for you. It's going to go try to go into the 60s. Yeah, I'm still looking at it because it's on the 20 SMA. Don't cancel it yet because it's just the 20 SMA. It's, it's digging in. It's probably going to want to stop them into the 80s. That's what they're that's what they're trying to do. To stretch it out out. Russell is holding pretty well. We have six minutes into uh, 1030. Let's take a quick look at the 30 minute charts inside. SMP inside. Don't rush into anything guys. Don't rush. Not the, today's not the market to rush in anything. Inside a little bit weaker in the Dow. Remember, I noticed that uh, we have a little bit of weakness in the Dow stocks compared to yesterday. Uh, let's see here, the 30 minute inside rejection, double top formation, popping out into that area. All right, let's check out the 15 again here. Um, yeah, we're gonna go by 15. We're gonna go by 15 right now. 15, okay. NASDAQ holding. Lots of pressure into the Dow. Dow is the weakest one right now. Russell and NASDAQ holding well. And if you're looking at a five minute chart, NASDAQ still holding that 20 SMA. Okay, gotcha, Randy, thank you. All right, let, let's just wait. The market is not clearly decided which way it wants to go. GBTC is back into the 20 above $20.
Hey, Russell now giving up, but NASDAQ still holding. Wow, that's a shift right there. Uh, we have a uh, one minute. Do not take any decision yet on NASDAQ. Do not take any decision yet on NASDAQ. Do not enter yet NASDAQ. Okay, if you're in, you're in, Keith. Okay, so now the stop becomes, wow, they're pushing it. We have one more minute, guys. Wow. Okay, if you guys are in, if you guys are in, that's fine. I didn't get in. Uh, your stop is going to be right now 80. Put the stop at 80. I'm going to manage it for you guys right now. I was waiting for the timing to close at 1030. Okay, so you guys that are in, your stop is going to be 80. Okay, it's 1030. Okay, everybody in now, 15 or 16, 15 or 16, everybody in. Over 18 is gonna have pressure to 20. Okay, I got filled at 15. Okay, now we have the 15 minute rotation in NASDAQ. Yeah, Paul, you mentioned Billy. Yeah. All right, the stop is 80. Gonna put an alert there. So we want to put it like 78 or something, 78. Bull flag formation, expanding higher. We should see targets into 20. And we're going to go 20, 25, 30, 35. And uh, there's a little bit of room into the 40. Wow, if it gets over 25, it can have velocity into 40. Let me show you what I'm seeing and what I'm, the time frame that I'm using here. Okay, so this is a 15 minute rotation that came in at 1030, right? So you can see it right here. The trigger is red at 1030. We had 10 o'clock reversal right 10 o'clock reversal and 10 30 trigger you couldn't get it any more textbook than this this is literally textbook um hey brad yes uh in the dow right here um at between 12 you know it's, it's the initial trade from earlier uh 12 i got filled at 15 into 10 30 so anywhere this 15 minute rotation basically Anywhere between 12 and 18 possible trigger. 
because you have the five minute that rotating and now we have the 15 minute that rotated and we want to see it so here's the thing guys if we manage to break over 20 here you see the 20 not only that is this resistance we have this dotted line there there are a lot of algos that are living here right now lots and lots and lots of algos and you're getting here selling pressure, but at the same time, you're getting a, a buying pressure from the 10 EMA. The problem is that you have these two lows right here. Okay. These two lows. Okay. Right here that are creating as well selling pressure. So you're having some selling pressure developing into that spot. We want to maintain this area and we want to break above 20 we break above 20 we're going to start moving higher and we just had a high of 20 i didn't take any profit by the way uh and nasdaq right here nasdaq nasdaq um yeah i'm showing the nasdaq stock uh, nasdaq uh index I didn't take any profits into the 20s. Just FYI. Okay. Wow. Good job, Randy. Oh my goodness. That's awesome. Okay. So everybody's different here. So you can see I have a much larger risk tolerance. So I like to stick around and trace for a little bit longer time. Uh, I didn't get a chance to sell here. It just popped in like nanosecond into the high into 20 but i really want to see it over 20. over 20 can expand higher and our next target is going to be um 30 and can potentially run into this 40. you're shooting for 25 yeah 25 would be sweet 25 is sweet keith 25 is sweet 25 is this prior high right here if it gets over 20 and it stays over 20, stabilizes over 20, it's gonna go there. It's gonna go higher than that. Well, let's see. Like I said, baby steps today. I mean, any profit is great today on a day like today. Any profit is great. Here's the 20 again. Come on, break it, break it, break it, break it. We need a print of 22 and a half. If you see that print of 22 and a half, we're going higher. Oh, entry, Brad, I said it's it's between 912 and 918. Andy Price, 912 to 918. I got 915 because it's a five minute trigger and a 15 minute trigger. So anywhere between 912 and 918. because we're looking to get it over 20. Okay, I got it. Yeah, I got in at 15. Some of the room members got in at 12. And the 12 was the five minute rotation. Right here. was developing, was developing at the time. Things happen super fast. Here it is again. Come on, we need to get it over. We have the 23 and a half. Hey, Keith, you're getting closer to your 25. Now you got me jittery at 25. <laughs> oh my gosh, Paul, really? Paul, do you, can you do me a favor? Can you post all panelists and attendees? Because I cannot copy and paste. Come on, 25. We're going with Keith here. Yeah, rub the screen. <laughs> I mean, I'm telling you, we really need this. If there is one index that is going to go, this is the only index that is going to go. This is going to be all, our ultimate target into the 40s. And then we're going to say a prayer to the trading gods. Okay. <laughs> Were the trading gods followers, <laughs> and um, 
if we get it into that spot, I am like so happy. I'm going to take the rest of the day off. I'm telling you. Okay, 25, Keith. 25. 25. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. 25. I'm still holding. <laughs> I'm still holding. Okay. Okay. Let's get it. Let's get it going. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. Let's do a little into the 50s. Uh, into the 40s. Wow. From my lips to the trading God's ears. Okay. We have a 34. Remember, we had target into 30. 30 and 40, 30 and 40. Let's go. What did I tell you? If it gets over 20, it's going to go higher. Wow, sir. Let's go, let's go, let's go. We're less than two points away. Less than two points away from 40, guys. Chunk it out. Massive out at 40 and then leave the rest a little bit in. Leave, the, leave just a little baby, baby, baby lot in or a baby contract in. Okay, we got our 40s. Just remember, leave if we're in trail mode right now. Okay, lift the stops. Hold on a second. Lift the stops to 30. Lift the, all the stops to 30. Hold on. I know I'm kind of choking. No, no, no. Don't do 30. Don't do 30. Don't do 30. SMP is accelerating with an inside rotation. Don't do 30. Just wait. Just wait. We took profits into the 40s. If you can't take the heat, the rest of the lot that you have in, remember, I always like to scale out half. I actually scaled more than three quarters, more than three quarters out at 40. We need to see a print of 40, 1, 25. Holding my breath. Holding my breath. The SMP trigger, we may go higher. We may go higher here, guys. There is another spot. The heavy resistance is coming from the declining 50 SMA. Big gyration zone, big gyration zone. And that is on the one hour chart. Come on, let's do it. All we need is 41.25. 41.25, it's going to send it to 45. 41.25. Come on, you can do it. And then we can lift our stops, okay? Trading gods are good with us today. All right, mini inside, one minute inside. I'm going to take you to the one minute. This is what we're trading right now. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Nothing to see here. Let's see 45 and then we can expand to 50. Okay, 42s. Hold it, hold it, hold it. I wanna see the segment here in the one minute and all of these indices, quick, 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 quick. I wish we could do like, all right, we're getting momentum. Look, momentum, momentum, momentum. We have, we're having momentum. Come on NASDAQ, you can break that 50 SMA in no time. Come on, Nancy. And by the way, this morning I collected some really gorgeous profits in limited brands. Gorgeous trade that we had for since the end of last month. So my PNL is extra green right now with those profits. Come on, move it, move it, move it. I want to trail 40, you know, but I would need to see it into the 45 or so. Come on, all the indices are going. Blast, blast, blast. We need 45 and 50. Come on, Ezzy. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Trail 40, guys. Trail 40, 40, 40, out, out, out. I'm out. I'm out. I don't like the momentum. See, it's just, it's just stalling too much. I don't want to trail 32 because I don't want to, um, you know, just give up. Uh, eight points here. 
I have no doubt that it may continue higher. Okay, so in fact, if it trades over 45 right now, it's going to start blasting higher, but I'm done. Jose, you're shooting for 67. If you're shooting for 67, here's the problem with it. See where it's at? Into the 50 SMA. It's going to have some gyrations here. It's going to have some gyrations. If you hold it, it will go. It will go. But you need to wait for the price to pull back, rotate, and then it's going to go here. It has room to go into the 80s. Not only 67, but it has room for the 80s. But I'm done. I am done. And I couldn't be any happier. So by the way, guys, you know, this was a combination trade. It was the one hour with the five minute trigger and the 15 minute trigger and then uh, with the one minute because they were all caught catching some kind of momentum. Say it's, uh, <laughs> you know what it's going to do here? It's going to break out over 45. If it breaks out over 45, it's gone. I didn't have the patience to wait for it on a day like today because coming into the trading session today, I thought, man, I'm not going to take a trade today in this shop. I didn't like anything. All right. Okay. Now it's going to go. Very green. Yeah, you know what? Trading is about catching a portion within the swing low and high. It's not about catching bottoms or catching tops. Okay, I've got no doubt it's going to hit 50 right now, 50 and possibly 60. Let me show you the 15. So Jose, good job for holding it. This was our goal into the 40s, into that 50 SMA. That was our goal. And here you have it into the 50, uh, into the 200 SMA. I mean, if you're holding it, you know, kudos to you. Like, I'm telling you, <laughs> kudos. Um, <laughs> you're gonna bail at 67 i'm i have a feeling you have a monetary uh goal into 67 is that true i used to trade like that it's like i gotta make this i i gotta make today this certain amount <laughs> i knew it i'm telling you like i know some traders <laughs> i know it's when there's not a technical level into 67, that's a monetary level. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, now you need to see the print. Take a look. It printed a 50. Um, let me give you a smaller time frame here. It needs to get over 50 right now. This is the one minute. Like I could take any, uh, you know, I'm telling you like any money is good today. <laughs> Anything is good today. But I don't want you, Jose, here's the thing. I don't want you to lose anything. So make sure, you know, I'm watching here the five minute. 33, trail 33. Okay, trail 33. Okay, trail 33, don't let it, you know, don't let it, it got a bubble of air between um, 
This 10 EMA, this confluence spot, also resistance. I mean, you have a lot of things here. So if it breaks 33, it's going to want to come in and into the 20s. But as long as it's holding a little bit of green here, it can fill this up. It has two more, two, uh, two more minutes left. LBS is back up doing a bowl sandwich. All right, Jose, uh, move your stop up to 40. Jose, Jose, stop to 40. Um, okay, uh, Randy, are you in ES? Uh, if you're in ES, let me know what the price is. Okay, you're not in. No, no trade so far. No trade so far. Okay, no trade so far. Let's go back to the fives. All right, so now any pullback right now may become viable for ES, but ES is not getting the strength that it needed to push, push, push. It needed to be right now, like a, at least into the 70s to 73, 70 to 73. Yeah, Jose 40, don't let it go below 40. Copper is incredibly strong. The weekly and the monthly incredibly strong. Popping again off the 10 EMA, no pullbacks. Oh, TB. You have a work meeting. No, it didn't, NK. Huh, I'm going to try to figure out something for you, TB. Um, Hmm. So you cannot be here at 1030. So you took the profits.
Okay. Uh, I'm trying. So what I was saying now is that maybe um, I could keep you longer in the trades. You know, like Jose is doing right now. But in order to do that, TB, okay, in order to do that, um, you need to do what Jose is doing. Okay, out. Good job. Good job, Jose. See the topping tails? It's going to pull back probably into the 920. If it pulls back into the 920 and if it reshuffles, then there's perhaps another trade that is setting up. Uh, but that trade needs to set up in at, at 11.15. So we have 20 minutes. Ooh, ooh, I know, I know, I know. I feel so good. I feel so good. Because here's the thing, guys. I came into the session, uh, and the reason why I took you to those uh, bigger charts so you could understand you know, what's going on on the trading session today, because it was so super messy. Okay, it was definitely super messy. So here's the short squeeze, low odds. So what it did, it, it broke above. We have patience to wait for it. And then we pulled back 20 SMA and then it rotated higher here. I know it was fun, right? On a choppy, messy day, it was fun. <laughs> now that we're out <laughs> with profits, I mean, not bad, not bad. I managed to get $500 per contract on that. Yeah, it, it was. And here's the thing. I was a bit hesitant on the five minute rotation. I was hesitant because the reality is that we needed to get it out of four. We needed to get the trade out of four, but I waited for the 15 minutes. So there was a very obvious five minute here. But if you see here, so we had the one, two, three, four, five pullback. Man, that never fails. That never fails, right? Uh, take a look at the time. All right. So let's analyze the trade, the market open, usual fleecing, the pop higher. We got a uh, we got a peekaboo high right into ten o'clock as expected. Ten o'clock reversal. We know we knew that the market is more likely to pull back into a classic reversal time. Uh, the ten EMA didn't hold. Remember, we were talking about the one two three cha 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 rotation into the green. That never happened. And then we have the doji. This doji actually. Um, created that awareness for us that we could go above this doji over 12 above this high uh, to rotate back into a bull flag formation. Uh, but then again, we took out the low. And I remember Pratam was saying that we broke above that 85, 84. And I said, yeah, that's fine. Let's keep the trade still active because it pulled back into the 20 SMA and not only that, but we were trading into a minor support spot. So this resistance created that minor support. And then the price rotated here on the five minute. I didn't have much confidence in it. And I'm gonna tell, we, uh, I'm gonna tell you why. At the moment at 1025, I really wanted to get it as close as possible into 1030. So we're not gonna be taken in and then institutions come to force sell. So I was looking at the indices at 10, uh, at 1025. And as you can see here at 10, okay, here it is 10 at, at 1025. Here it is at 1025. We were just bottoming. So we were not rotating. So we were just bottoming and this, uh, this candle was still active. And then again, here at 1025, you can see it here. We were bottoming inside bar rotation up sure squeeze here into uh, ym but i was more focused on the relative strength index than uh playing the dow but the dow had a really good trade here from this uh, doji inside bar and up this was the first target into the 87 second target uh into the 300 uh third target into the 20s and then three 350 i mean it's like literally textbook textbook uh, and uh, 
At the, so at the time when NASDAQ was rotating, the rest of the indices were bottoming. We're, uh, we're actually making new lows because remember, this candle was full blown red candle right here into the low at Russell. And this was also red all the way here into the 48s. And we also had a full red candle into the, uh, into the 17. And just seconds before uh, the uh, close of this bar, we um, surged and we formed these inside, inside bars right here inside bar here as well see into the 1030 so i see a classic 10 o'clock reversal with a 1030 trigger classic trade out loud um scenario for uh indices and for stocks for day trading stocks as well and by the way guys next year uh we're coming out with a course for day trading stocks it's a lot based on the methodology of the day trading uh of the obviously the um, power income uh, day trading for futures, but it has additions to it if you want to day trade stocks. And most likely next year, we're going to have another service, but that is um, after the first quarter, uh, we're going to uh, introduce another service and that is going to be, um, um, it's going to be a bit of hands off type of service because the trades will be provided at the beginning of the day. Uh, what trades need, uh, what trades and the setups uh, will be um, uh, sent to you guys by nine o'clock. So at nine o'clock, you guys are already going to have, for those of you that are going to sign up for uh, day trading stocks, they're going to line up and they're going to have target one, two, three. The management is going to be very simple on them. Target one hit, you know what to do, target two hit. So we're going to provide all the instructions what to do on each level of the trade. All right, so um, I think this is, for me, this is, I'm done for the day. So I'm seeing the pullback here. Like I said, if NASDAQ pulls back into the 20s, we may have a shot of, um, of another long, maybe, maybe. The odds are getting uh, way lower as we're approaching, uh, as we're approaching uh, 1130. So I'm still going to watch the market into 1115. If we have a trade develop into 1115, fine. If not, this is going to be it. We made our money. We're done. It's all you need is one good trade, not in and out, in and out, tick charts and all that stuff. And there's a time for tick charts, but not now. All right. Um, Michael, please illustrate the relative strength index that you mentioned. Of course, of course. So first of all, when you want to look at the relative strength, uh, you know, regardless of you know what time frame you're using, just make sure that you have all the indices on the same time frame. And the one thing, the first thing that you want to look at when you look at relative strength is um, a percentage gain or percentage loss. So uh, if you're looking, for instance, at the Dow, you're going to be looking right here where I have my cursor, right? And you're seeing that it has, it's down 0, 0.35%, right? Then you're looking at the S&P, it's down 0, 0.15. You're looking at NASDAQ, ooh, NASDAQ into the green, right? So obviously it's divergent compared to these two, right? And then you're noticing Russell, Russell percentage-wise, 0.03. So who's the leader right here? NASDAQ, right? Because it's up 0.36%. Who's the laggard? The laggard is definitely the Dow because the Dow is down 0.33%. So this is one uh, parameter that you can base your decision on, the relative strength and in, uh, weakness. The other thing is that you have to make sure that your percentage matches the chart structure. That's the most important thing. So the chart structure is determined by support resistance from the 10 a.m. Uh, low to the 10 a.m. high. So you're going to have to bracket the 10 a.m. high to the 10 a.m. low. And that is if you want to develop the overall bias for, let's say, for the rest of the trading session. Because if you want to determine the relative strength weakness before the market opens, then you will have to analyze using the same parameters, uh, but you're using the whole entire trading session uh, from the whole entire uh, Asian session and London session. So you're using those overnight high lows and you're developing the structure based on that. Uh, but I like the 
New York trading session. I like the 10 a.m. high and 10 a.m. low. This is the golden rule, which is uh, which is very efficient, whether you're day trading or swing trading, and it helps you take really good decisions. All right, so this is the 10 a.m. high and the 10 a.m. low. And what, what you do is you bracket all of these. And again, use tools on your charts in order to develop these. They're very easy, very, very easy to determine. So now you take a look based on the 10 a.m. high and low, you take a look at the chart and say, hey, where is the relative strength? Is there a pattern that is emerging off of these 10 a.m. low and highs? And you can see here that uh, we have a low, we have a higher low, and here we have a high and we have a lower high. So basically the pattern is slanting right here, okay? So it's forming sort of a pennant. You can see that it's not going higher, but at the same time, it's not going lower because it's respecting this trend line. Uh, as with m and &E SMP made a new high. So it's a little bit more bullish. And you can see here that it's forming somewhat of a trend. Uh, and with NASDAQ, NASDAQ is actually into an uptrend because it has the two higher, two higher highs and two higher lows, right? Uh, and that is, that is most likely to develop. So overall structure, this is bullish. So any pullback that is happening here in NASDAQ, like I said, from these highs, into this uh, into this confluence spot. So any pullback into that area, uh, usually on relative strength uh, indices or stocks, you're going to expend and ex expect an expansion higher. So this is the forecast pullback that we're looking for in NASDAQ. And we know that we have a precise time when we look for this setup to happen at 1115. If that's not happening at 1115, I'm walking away because I'm not trading the doldrums. I'm not trading the rest of the trading session. Setups are not likely to work as much and the velocity is drying out after 1130, not unless there's a catalyst that comes into the market, news, narrative, comments, et cetera. Um, you need to have something. You need, the market needs a reason to rally. Uh, and uh, the other thing is that uh, we didn't take a look at Russell. Okay, so Russell. Okay, Russell has a bit stronger structure, right? It has a double top and also has rising bottoms, right? And you can see here that it's doing a five minute rotation off of this, uh, off of this trend line, higher low right here. Uh, so basically a break over this level right here is going to project the price higher. How high it can go? Well, most likely if it trades above the 10 EMA, it's not yet out of the woods, but it can possibly run back into the same resistance spot, which is the pressure point, which at this point, if we break above it, we can continue higher. And if we continue higher in the afternoon trading session, I would say possibly after 132 o'clock or so, 215, you can get a pullback and another rotation for the rest of the trading session. But this can happen to 230 or so and can go on uh, into higher. Uh, there's, of course, there's another possibility that we remain range bound throughout the trading session today. Um, and that would not be a bad thing because we have captured some really nice um, momentum off of some uh, nice key levels that we had onto the daily charts that I mentioned earlier. So you can see it here. Let me just clean the chart out. You can see here that the bounce came off the 10 EMA. So when you're looking at the market structure, uh, again, remember these are moving averages. These are bands of resistance or bands of support, okay? Uh, whether the price is above or below. So here the price is above, the, but it, it crossed a little bit below, but this is normal. This is the normal fleecing, right? This is the normal fleecing. So oftentimes it breaches and then it pushes forward. So slink back and push forward. And again, if we're going to close the day like this in this kind of uh, segment candle, then guess what? Tomorrow we're going to be bullish because in the overnight trading session, if the price is going to uh, get over today's highs, right, uh, the price is going to start pushing further higher. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's recorded. It's recorded. Yeah, I will send you guys the recording. I'll post it on our private Twitter feed. Of course. Okay, so that makes sense, right? 
All right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, gold here. So again, I'm not seeing the market, uh, you know, try to have any kind of formation. And again, a very important thing for you guys, you know, as you're moving into the um, PM session, towards the PM session, um, be very careful on applying the time frames. okay? Be very careful. You saw that this morning we had a combination of the one minute we were actually uh, rolling the trade in five, 15 minute. We knew the 1030. We knew that we had to wait into that 1030. And in all honesty, like I said, if the market continues to be this choppy the way it was this morning, uh, when we started the pre-market game plan, I said, hey, guess what? I, I don't think I'm going to take a trade today. Or if I'm going to take a trade today, I'm probably going to be around 1030. And that's what happened. Okay. So remember, you have to have the patience to wait for the money to come to you. Don't chase. Don't chase. Uh, I can potentially see a lot of traders that were caught in here. Uh, remember the distance between the entry and the stop are still very wide. So that means that you're going to apply a greater risk. But anyways, um, so gold, like I said, you know, the more gold hovers into this area uh, on the daily chart into that 1850, it's, it's going, I think it's just going to be stronger. You know why? Because uh, if it's going to hover and meander and trade and continue to coil into this 1850 for a couple of more days or a few more days or I don't know, maybe another uh, week or two, this 20 SMA is going to catch up this uh, to price. So it's going to start squeezing to the upside. And then you're going to have the 50 SMA that is going to be pulled down a little bit. So you're going to get a squish in price. So in that moment, that is going to be the decisive moment because uh, when this 200 SMA, if that scenario is going to play out, uh, if this 200 SMA is going to squeeze into the 50s, let's say, or it's going to squeeze into the 48s or around that area, any break below that spot will be more bearish for uh, gold. But right now a break over 50 is not gonna have a lot of pressure to the downside. Like I said, it's probably gonna be 50 to 30 and that's it. And then you're gonna have a hard bounce because there are tons of algos into that, uh, into that 20 spot, 20 to 30 spot, tons of algos. And then uh, it's gonna be way more evident if these uh, uh, 50 SMAs are gonna pull in, right? If the price continues to hover into these lows right here, they're gonna start uh, pulling, back, pulling down a little bit and they're gonna try to uh, uh, follow the price a little bit tighter. So then you're gonna have a, a squeeze. It's gonna be bullish above or bearish below. So it's gonna be more evident in that manner. But now there's nothing happening. I'm noticing oil here. Like I said, oil is trading into a really wide range. Uh, we do have, like I said, it's from 41 to about $43. Uh, that is the range, about $2 range. So I'm not doing anything here um, in uh, oil. I actually looked at it on the 15 minute. There's just a bunch of like, uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's a range, it's range bound. So 4160 by 4190. And then you have pressure point here, you have pressure point at 42, you have pressure point all the way into the 42, 42 10. You saw it yesterday, it didn't go anywhere. So um, that's, you know, that's pretty much it. Okay, we're closing in at, it's 11, 11 right now, we're closing in on uh, 11, 15. This is the last trigger time for the morning. And uh, we need about three candles, three candles, there's three, no, okay. We need three minutes right now. We have one, two, three, four, five candles, which is kind of textbook right here in NASDAQ. So I'm um, looking at it. I'm not loving the 15 minute structure into NASDAQ. I think NASDAQ is, can potentially run a little bit lower here. Let's see. No, it's still hovering into the 20s. Still hovering into the 20s. Uh, so far, NASDAQ needs to get over 40 in order to start going higher, and it has a target of 50. And then it has a target of 60. And then I'm going to use Jose target of 67. <laughs> OK. Um, and he, he just put it out there. I mean, I'm telling you, if he put it out, if someone puts out there something, 
the universe is kind of like doing some reading and saying, hey, Jose, put up, put that 67 out there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and then it may have some room into the 70, 70, 70 to 75, 70 to 75. Okay. Um, hey, Mike, uh, what is the minimum count you could have to engage in the swing program? Okay. Yeah, you, it's totally doable. It's totally doable. All you have to do is position size. I do have a position size calculator. Okay. So position size, do 1% of that, 1% of that, and take the trades that, you know, don't take the Teslas or any, you know, but take the trades, let's say that have, uh, that are lower price point, you know, like we had the LB, for instance, and uh, we had some, um, you know, other trades, like, I don't know, um, let me try to remember what else, because I don't have, uh, like, MJ we had, um, and we have, which is, um, let's say, a $13 trade. Um, yeah, but it's totally doable, you know, like the Cisco's and all that stuff is totally, GBTC, exactly, Lori, GBTC, yeah, so totally, of course, stock, not as, yeah, stocks under $50, I say, stocks under $50, and the reality is that when I scan for stocks, I love these stocks, I also trade, and we also call some stocks that are above $50, they're $100, $200, uh, $400, not that often, because not a lot of uh, people can trade them, uh, you know, like Tesla, whatever. And that's why I was, you know, so jumpy into Tesla. We had, you know, it's a $400 stock. Not a lot of people can trade a $400 stock. And to be honest, I don't really feel very comfortable because I'm trading the common. I'm not doing options. Okay. But it's totally doable. For, for example, I'm going to give you an example right now. Um, airlines, airlines, are setting up for a possible long. I think that once a stimulus package comes out, once a vaccine comes out, people are gonna be more optimistic about traveling and uh, they, may, uh, they may start rallying. And Delta is $37. For instance, uh, American Airlines is a $12 stock. Uh, these are going to be top watches of every week from now on. Uh, for instance, uh, RCL, you know, cruise liners, you know, RCL, CCL, uh, uh, CCL is a bit a uh, better price point than RCL. RCL is into the 70s, CCL is into the $17, but yeah, definitely. All right, here is another five minute rotation that is setting up exactly at, take a look at the time, 11.15. Those of you that took the class, okay. And if you guys that took the class, you could see what I'm talking about, okay. So this is a rotation pending right here. So if the price is going to trade over 930 with a stop, I'm not going to be taking this one, by the way. I am done for the day uh, because this may take a little longer. Okay, so usually uh, trades that are developing uh, at 1115, uh, you can hold through lunch. And I don't want to hold through lunch. I'm already starving right now. Okay. Uh, so even though I had breakfast, but I'm still starving. Um, uh, hey, NK, no, that's going to be next year. It's more likely going to be probably March. I'm thinking it's probably going to be in March. Uh, the day trading stocks, day trading stocks. And we're going to have a pool of stocks about no more than three to four stocks that we're going to be calling every single day. Uh, for day trades. Uh, Sean, any reason you don't trade options? I don't like to trade options because a lot of times if I'm right in a trade, uh, maybe I didn't forecast the right amount of time that I needed to give for that trade, or maybe I'm entering a phase in the market where it's sideways like now. And the trades, let's say, are not going anywhere. And that's the reason why I don't do options on futures either, um, because you know there's that time sensitive sensitivity to these trades, and um, 
in options often you know they expire worthless right if you're not right with the timing and where in you're into a common you know into a swing trade if you're uh doing a trade then you have that liberty to say hey i'm waiting until the targets are hit or the stop uh takes me out of the trade so you, it, it's a much better option Of course. Okay, here it is, guys. For those of you that are interested in a next trade, NASDAQ is the only one that is setting up better here. So it's going to be 930, 930 by, I would say, by under 915. 930 by 915. Very tight stop. Okay. Okay, and the targets on this, you're going to want to see the target uh, into the 40s. 40 is going to be a big pressure point, but if it trades over 40, you're going to have 45. Remember, we we're uh, going through the same targets, 40, 45, and 50. I just typed it in. Hey, Thomas, could you explain more how this works for stocks next year? So it's going to be a day trading. So uh, what we're going to be doing is at the beginning of the trading day, we will be sending out the trades uh, via email. We're working out to see if we can have that app developed uh, by next year uh, because it's taking some time. Uh, or we're going to have a separate Twitter feed. We're going to see about that. Uh, but the trades are going to be delivered before the market opens. And of course, you can uh, you can trade with me uh, the futures. And plus, you can have uh, you can have the trades delivered uh, for stocks. Uh, I think that next year we're going to have tremendous opportunity in stocks um, for, you know, uh, I think that if the market is going to um, receive the vaccine it's uh, you know the tourism industry and by the way the parameters can be changed uh for this trip no still 30 still 30 by still 30 by 15. still 30 by 15. see how clean it is one two three four five and you're getting the rotation 11 15. you cannot make this thing up i'm telling you <laughs> you cannot make it up so over 30, this is a go. Stop 15, look for target into 40. I'm not taking it anymore. Like I said, I don't wanna be stuck in it. Here it is, here's the trigger. Okay. Um, any other questions? Okay, if you want this to make it a quick trade, just take the profits at 40 and done. Dan, yeah, absolutely. Just take it. Just take ten points and done if you want. If you don't want to trail. Halfway there. Um. Okay, so the course is. Um, the last course of the year is going to be, uh, it was actually scheduled for the 7th. It will start on the 14th, okay? So it will start, instead of the 7th, it will start on the 14th. Yeah, it's still from, uh, from uh, 2 to 4. I like it from two to four for multiple reasons. The market is open and we also have uh, tons of references uh, to the market as the market is trading, is active, is live. Okay, 35, you're definitely halfway there into the 40s. Like I said, you have the option to kill it. Remember, target one is the easiest target to achieve. Less than three points away from 40. Less than two points away from 40. And it's creating some pressure here. And 
Here it is, one point away from 40. Just a quick 10 point right here. Half a point away. Just half a point away. At this point, you could put the stop at break even for those of you that are in. Oh, I see a lot of you guys are in. Okay. <laughs> All right. So remember, target one is the easiest target to achieve. If you want that, that was like a quick trade going into the London session close. So again, the stop is at 430. Good job, Jose. Uh, Jennifer was the previous resistance spot that we had. Remember, we trailed at 40. So 40 became that resistance spot because of the topping tails right here, because of the topping tails. This was actually the cell formation, right? And it's running right into this, uh, right into this spot. One tick away from that. You see it here into the 40s. Mm -hmm. Okay, one tick away. If you're in, just peel it out 40 and done. If for those of you that want to still stay in, uh, you could actually trail 37 and look for the next target into 45. <laughs> Good job, TB. Awesome. I didn't know you all of you guys hopped in. Good job. Good job, everyone. Okay. So if anyone is still in the trade, you could ultimately, um, uh, you know, exit or trail 37. Okay. I like to trade. So if I take another trade in the PM session, I want to take it like target one and done. Yeah, the tar the, the setup was beautiful, was textbook, was textbook. I can't complain. All right, so if you're still in, let me check something out. So if you guys are still holding the 37, you should still be in. 37 is your trail so far. And now we're gonna look for 45. And in fact, yeah, that's, that's the stop, 37, 37. Beautiful doji gal. It, just beautiful, doji man. All right, so 45, 45 to 50 is going to be your next target. 45 and 50, 45 and 50. I'm going to trail it for those of you guys that are in. Good job, everyone. All right, we're less than two points away from that. Well, boy, is it easier to trail when I'm not in the trade? I'm telling you. <laughs> Jake, good job. Stay in. I've got it. I've got this. I've got this. Stay in. No trail spot yet. In about three minutes, uh, three seconds, we're going to trail it. Trail 940 right now, guys. 940. 940 trail. Trail 940. Good job, everyone. All right. And nice job on the 45. Target two is hit. You should be skilled out a little bit there. If you are still holding or if you want to, uh, you know, hold the entire position. If you hold the entire position, your trail is still 4-0. All out, NK all out at 4-5. Good job. 15 points, that's amazing. 
You know how many traders will kill for five points in NASDAQ? <laughs> a lot. And I'm talking about constant. Most important thing is consistency. All right, we're getting into the 50s. 50 is a pressure point from all the way from 48 to 52. So if you guys, you could offer it out into the 50s. It just made a 49.25. Stay in. For those of you that are keeping the whole trade, 50, you can get out now at 50. Or if you want to trail, put the trail stop at 45. All out at 50. All out at 50 if you're in. Or put the trail at 45, whatever your decision is. Because this is resistance spot. If it breaks through this resistance right away, it's going to break out higher, possibly to 55. Okay, 53 to 55. Let me know if anybody is still in. Anybody still in? Anybody still in? Calling once, Jake still half in. Okay, your trail stop, Jake, right now is 45. 45, Jake. 45. 45. 45. That's it. Okay. Nine, I would have taken everything at 950. Like I said, you know, like target one is the easiest to achieve in the afternoon. I like to take target one and done. But if you want to trail, just trail it very tight. Go to a smaller time frame that is providing you the uh, information. Francis, you're still in. Your stop is still 45, 45. It's going to pull back from this 45. If it breaks 45, it's going to go to 940. <laughs> okay perfect perfect are you st are you still in or did you trail out did it go to 45 yeah it went to 44 and a half okay jose you're still in i know you're looking for that 67 i'm telling you you're gonna get it <laughs> you're gonna get your 67 Made a high of 57, you need 10 points from here. <laughs> Damn right. Okay, no trail so far, no trail. The trail is still under that. If you're still in, the trail is still that. Well, now it's 44 and a half, so 44, 45 area. You're looking for 975? Oh my God, you're killing me. I'm telling you. Let me see if that's doable. What is it? Oh, 975. That's doable. That is doable. Here's your 60. In fact, it went to 6175. Yeah, and it proved to be a fantastic market today for us because we waited. All right, so, okay, don't be complacent right now. I think that you should trail 50. I mean, I would trail 50, Jose, uh, Fran Francis and Jose. <laughs> okay, Francis is, look, is looking for 75. But guys, please trail 50. Please trail 50. Uh, you're an RTY from 1769. Not really liking RTY right now. Guys, time time to exit. Time to exit. Time to trail tight. To exit, exit, exit. Divergence. Exit, exit. Okay, 69. If you get another pop to 69, get out, Francis. Other than that, put a hard stop at 65. If it breaks below 65, it's going to go to 60. Okay. Danger, danger, danger in the market right now. Okay, that was nice. That was nice. Okay, 
Uh, so we're getting weakness in Russell. We're getting, you know, weakness in um, YM and range bound in mini S&P and bullish, very bullish. In fact, half a percent, almost half a percent up in NASDAQ. All right, guys, this is all for today. Hope you all enjoyed it. Make some money and learn some stuff. Uh, and uh, I will see you tomorrow for the last day this uh, week uh, in the trading room. Enjoy the rest of the day. You guys deserve it. We focus two hours and done. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a fantastic day. But before I go, let me know how many of you guys made money and how, how many points did you guys make in NASDAQ? How many points did you guys make in NASDAQ? How many points did you guys make in NASDAQ today overall? If you took the first trade a lot, <laughs> awesome. Oh my gosh, 29 points, Art. Okay, huge, Jose, 17.5. Okay, awesome. Awesome, guys. Perfect. Class, Chris, I love that. <laughs> Class dismissed. Jake, 40, Jake, you are rocking it. Okay, uh, Laura, Joy, hey Joy, thank you. 2060, fantastic, fantastic. You guys rock, you guys rock. You guys are superstar, superstars. Francis 60, uh, Glenn 20, Laura, uh, Laura eight points and 27 points. Uh, Joy, enough points to make my day. Aw, thank you, Michael. I'm just doing what the market is telling me to do. <laughs> Thank you so much, guys. Okay, enjoy the points. And remember, because we're seeing some pullbacks right now in YM and S&P, things may get a little jittery. Uh, the London session just closed. That's why I said if you're still in NASDAQ, just close, 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 because it, we're going to have some turbulence here. All right, everyone. See you tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of the day. Bye.